I'm Jackie Valenci Lauper, and welcome to another exciting edition of Jackie's Buzz. So, hello, all you buzzers out there. Hang on tight because we have a very exciting episode planned for you. We will be talking to author Pamela Glasner, a very interesting, exciting author that's getting quite the buzz about her book, Finding Emmaus. And she has some exciting events coming up. We'll be talking about that a little later. As well as speaking to the lovely Crystal Aya about the London Betty premiere she attended last night in New Haven. And we're going to get the buzz on that. the lovely Pamela Glaster from this wonderful book, Finding Emmaus. Hi, Pamela. How Hi. are you? And I actually said the name of the book correctly. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> wow, this book, congratulations, by the way. Thank it you. has been getting so much attention. How exciting is that? It's very incredibly. <laughs> yeah, that's so wonderful. Now, this is a fictional novel that has become really kind of a champion of victims of a multi-billion dollar conspiracy between the pharmaceutical industry and the victims, would you say? Is that my The saying? pharmaceutical industry and the FDA. Yeah, and the FDA. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, FDA. I oh. just love the opening lines. Anyway, the year is 2008, and I am as I have been for the last 251 years, 98 years old. Wow. Yes. Is that the, just the most wonderful lines ever? I just <laughs> love that. I was like, oh my goodness. Can you tell us a little in your own words about the book? I just love uh, it. Sure. Well, it's a, uh, it's, it's a pretty dark Yes. A uh, fictional but factually based story, which is experienced through the lives of two people right. uh, who find out in adulthood that they are not mentally ill but are in actuality extraordinarily gifted. Wow. And because of that, and because of the appalling things that happen to them during the time they believe themselves to be mentally ill, they both embark on personal journeys. Frank in the 1600s, Catherine in present day, uh, find a way to transcend time and death and actually meet each other. Wow. And then work together to save the lives of millions of people who are being victimized um, by society and ostracized from society because they too are considered to be mentally ill. In the book you mentioned empath and um, I just wanted to, now is that a person, the meaning, is that a person really that feels empathy for another person or how would you describe it? Uh, an empath is a person who actually feels, experiences the emotions of another person as though they were their own. So if you, um, like a telepath would hear somebody else's thoughts. Mm -hmm. You've ever seen the TV show The Medium? Well, yes, she's not really a telepath, <laughs> but she it's it's inside her brain. It's mm -hmm. not she's experiencing it inside her head like in her dreams. An empath would experience the emotions as though the emotions are their own. So let's say if I'm walking down the street and um, and I'm an empath and, and I cross paths with you and you're really angry about something, mm -hmm. when we cross paths, I would actually feel your anger. And so what happens is the empath, absent enough information, would believe themselves to be mentally ill. And then they would go to a professional and say, I'm having all these mood swings. And the professional would say, you're right, you have a mental illness. And in the case of my book, what I did was I compared the, em the empathic personality mm. with somebody who has bipolar disorder. Right. Oh, interesting. In a recent interview, uh, you stated the best things don't come from you, but through you. I thought that was really interesting <laughs> and beautifully said. Well, thank you. It was wonderful. And I just got the feeling now, do you feel that maybe in a way you're also an empath or would you, would you say? I don't, well, I, I, I know that I'm a very sensitive person. I think that there's a difference. Um, when I said that the book came through me, mm -hmm. I, and I really do believe that, mm -hmm. there were so many parts of this book that as I was writing, something would suddenly end up on the page and I had no clue how it got there. I, I'm serious. Wow. I just, I didn't know I was going to write it, and the next thing I know it's, I mean, I know I was writing, but right. I, mean, I had no idea. You didn't have an outline. I didn't, I didn't have any guide at all. Wow. I just, it just ended up on the page. Like there's this one part, I don't want to give anything away. Right. There's this one part where Catherine, who mm -hmm. is the principal female character. Very interesting character. Catherine is, thank you, Catherine is having um, a cup of tea in the evening with Carly, who is the proprietress of the bed and breakfast where she's staying. And they're having this kind of hushed conversation 
they're in this, the bed and breakfast is a huge old Victorian, but you know, mm -hmm. dim, dim lighting, you know, candles or whatever, and right. it's at night, and it just kind of invites you to speak quietly. And so they're speaking quietly, they're finished with their conversation, they're cleaning up the, the teacups and whatever, and whatever they're doing. <laughs> And then I write down, and neither one of them noticed the shadowy figure that slinks off into the darkness. And I'm like, where did that come from? I had no idea that I was going to write that. I had no idea who the shadowy figure was. Wow. I had no clue. I mean, it was just, it was, and then I thought, okay, I'll just write it. I'll leave it. I mean, I wrote it. I'll just leave it there, and then I'll deal with it. And that became like an integral part of the remainder of the story. Wow. So, yes, when I say that it came through me, it just, That's when amazing. I tried to direct it, mm -hmm. when I tried to say, okay, I'm going to do this with the story, those were the parts of the story I ended up rewriting. Wow. As long as I stood three feet to the left of myself and minded my own business, <laughs> <laughs> the story did a really good job of writing itself without me interfering. That is amazing. <laughs> How long did it take to write the whole, the whole book? Including research time, because I would get to a point where I'd say, oh, I'm not sure of this, and right. so I would stop and I would do research. I didn't like research everything in advance. I would just say, I'd get to a thing where, like Frank is carrying, when he's a child, he's carrying coins. And I didn't know specifically what coins they were. I know that back in the early 1600s, there were English coins here, Dutch coins, and whatever, but I wasn't sure of the exact names of them. Right. It took a long time to find specifically what coins and what, what monetary value they were and all that. Wow. It took me three days of research to say he had a penny in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, but I didn't want to get it wrong because then if you try and fool people, if you if you try, if you get it wrong, yes, yes. that's like the worst thing. Yes, you you'd get a lot of heat for that. <laughs> well, it distracts people, it pulls them out of the story. Right. And so as a writer, you don't want to have anything in the story that distracts your reader and pulls them out and has them saying, oh, well, that can't be, because then the next thing they'll do is put the book down. Yes. So I just, I would stop, and like I said, for three days, I'm searching around trying to figure out what coin this little boy would have had in his hand. As he, <laughs> And, and so all of that from the time I first started writing with the research and then I'm the slowest typist in the universe. I wrote the book longhand, but then I had to type it into the computer. Oh, wow. So you still write all... Uh, I write everything that's longhand. That's so wonderful. But it took me from beginning to end, it took me five months. I don't know why, but in my head I always picture writers writing that way and I just love that. And lastly, you are so fun. We have to bring you back to talk oh about gosh, all the most exciting. You. You're just wonderful. Lastly, you have something so exciting coming up in New York City. I do. I'm I do. Just, okay, can and I, Jackie's I, Buzz is covering it too, so tell us a little bit Can I shamelessly promote myself Yes, now. please do. Okay, okay. Please do. This is well, so exciting. I have this amazing amazing publicist who does everything short of walking on water and his name is Miller Wright. Oh. If anybody needs a publicist, you can't have him because you can't make him too busy. Yes. <laughs> um, but anyway, Miller um, got me this amazing thing in New York. We are, I am going to be, me and my book, we wow. um, are going to be at Barnes and Noble in Lincoln Center. Lincoln Center, how exciting just on, hearing on, that. On you know? uh, April 28th at 7.30, it's a Monday night. Oh it's the night April for April 26th, thank, 26, you. thank you. It's, it's the Monday night, it's the, and Monday it apparently is the night that most New York theaters are dark. Oh, cool. So it's a great night to So you to have no that. excuses not to come. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and Jackie's Buzz will be covering And Jackie's Buzz is going to be covering Oh, this is going to be so exciting. We're so excited. How do you feel with that coming up? You must be so thrilled. Are you just thrilled? I am. You I just am. have to breathe deep, right? And don't oh, I don't get, I don't oh, get so nervous. Exciting. No, just Unless, so of course, I mean, you never yeah. know. I mean, <laughs> Steven Spielberg walks in. Right. The then you, yeah. <laughs> But it's just thrilling, like, is the kind of your childhood dreams, because you want to always, always want to be a writer, right, you were saying? I didn't know, I mean, I, I, I always wanted to write a book, but right. it wasn't like I thought, okay, I really want to be the next J.K. Rowling right. or something it like just that. I just, it just, it just kind of happened. It was and meant to be. I love it. Oh. I am loving everything. And you are meant to be a writer, I mean, you are amazing. Oh, so congratulations, you. Pamela Glasner and her book, Finding Emeas. Thank you so much, thank Pamela. You. Thank mm -hmm. you.